Hi, welcome to Machine Learning Models with Python. I am Ornav Chakraborty from Up Degree. In this video, we are going to cover the topic that is the learning process. Now, what is a learning process? We'll be discussing on it into more details. So, let us go for the stepwise. So, how this learning process is having multiple different phases through which it will go through. The first one is the real world and from the real, real world we will be gathering our data. So from the real world the data will be gathered from different devices, cameras, sensors, databases, data sets and so on. So from the real world we will be gathering our data because on this particular data we will be doing lots of processing and so that we can learn something from it. So this data will be coming from different cameras, different videos and still photographies and then we'll be having the sensors. These sensors will be sending different types of information depending upon the nature of the sensors and the databases and data sets. Next phase is our data pre-processing. So whatever the data will be getting that may not be usable right at that moment before being processed. So that's why data requires pre-processing. Now questions might be coming in mind that what kind of pre-processing we are talking about. We are having the pre-processing like our noise filtering, feature extraction, normalization and so on. Now what are the noise filtering? Noise means unwanted data. Noise means outliers. So let us suppose we are having a particular column called age. That age we are having the age of a human being. So there we are finding some edges which are negative. Obviously, it is not possible. We are finding some edges more than 500 years. Obviously, that is not possible. So, you know that we are having some outliers existing in the age column in that particular database or data set. So, these will be known as a noise. Sometimes it may happen that my data in most of the records is missing. That means we are having the null values. So, dealing with the null values, dealing with the outliers, we can say that we are actually eliminating noise filtering. We are doing the noise filtering. So eliminating noise means eliminating unwanted data. Not always we will be going for elimination. Sometimes we may replace the invisible data with some feasible value. So that will be decided depending upon the uh, data pre-processing techniques. Next one is a feature extraction. Feature extraction means sometimes it may happen that we are going for actual data, whatever is existing in the database or data set, we are going to derive some secondary level of information. Let us suppose we are having some frequency patterns and from the frequency patterns, we, are, we can go for Fourier analysis and we can get some basic frequencies whose superimpose operations are creating the another resultant frequency. So that is known as the feature extraction where we can go for extraction of secondary level of information. Next one is our normalization. Sometimes the data might be a huge large data. So if the data is a big value data then obviously it should get normalized, it should get scaled to reduce the computational complexity, to reduce the time to process our data and to reduce the memory recommend while processing our data in the runtime. So that means normalization can also be considered as the scaling of data. Next one is our dimensionality reduction. We're having the topic that is feature selection and feature projection. Now, what are they? In case of dimensionality reduction, we can find that, let us suppose that is a particular database or data set where we are having say hundreds of attributes. Now, if I want to make my model learn considering all these hundred attributes, then obviously my model will be learning less and the predictions will be wrong in most of the cases. And in this case, this is known as overfitting. So overfitting means my model is not getting trained properly. So what is happening? You can find that. In this case, we can find out those prime feature elements. So what are the feature? We know that our database will be containing some set of rows and some set of columns. Each and every column is considering one feature. So from the least of huge set of features, we're going to extract those prime features on which the outcome is mostly dependent. So that is known as feature selection and feature 
projection so that is can be done by doing some statistical score so those features will be taken into our consideration to develop the learning process the learning model which will be having the statistical score higher and those features will be ignored having the statistical score lower next one is our model learning that is classification regression class studying and description regarding this classification regression class studying and description will be discussing a lot in our subsequent videos classification means let us suppose we are having one data set which is for the credit card applicants information so all the detailing about the credit card applicant is given and in the last column we are having whether the credit card was issued or not issued whether the credit card was granted or not granted so you know that here we are having two classes two classes there in the outcome attribute in the outcome attribute so two classes are there what are the classes that is approved and not approved so if we give another new applicant information then from the previous model if we learn then with the new unseen data we can predict that what is the class in which my new data row will be belonging so that is our classification let us suppose we are having two values x and y for a certain x we are getting a certain y so x's are having multiple different values y's are multiple different values and from there we are judging and we are calculating the correlation between x and y now for a new x if i can find out the new y then that is known as a regression so regression means here we will be having the relationships known relationships between two or multiple variables or more than two variables and for the new set of values for those variables we are going to predict the value for the for the outcome so in this way we are having the class studying and description in case of class studying we can go for say we have plotted one scatter plot and from the scatter plot for a new unseen point we are going to find out what is the class in which that very new point is belonging so that is known as the class studying regarding this classification regression class studying and descriptions everything will be having other videos for more detailing and obviously we will be implementing them using the python language for your better understanding next one we are having the cross validation and bootstrap now what is the cross validation so this phase is known as the model testing so we are having five different phases that is the data gathering we are having the data pre-processing dimensionality deduction model learning and this phase is known as model testing so here we are going to discuss two issues one is the cross validation and another one is the bootstrap now here we are having this cross validation we are having this full data set and this full data set will be divided into two part one is for the data set which will be used for the training and rest part will be used for the testing purpose and this testing purpose so at first we are going for the last 20 20 percent of our data set for the testing and then in the fold 2 we can easily find that the last but one the test 20 percent of this record sets will be treated for the test and in this way this is known as cross validation with fold value is equal to 5 so cv is equal to 5 that is a cross validation is equal to 5 in this case what we are doing we are actually dividing our data set into five different uh, sectors or segments and each and every time one of the segments will be treated for the test and rest four segments will be treated for the training of the model in this way we are having fold 1 2 3 4 5 in this way and then that final measure will be the average performance of all these five four so this is our cross validation in this way what will happen you see each and every record in the data set is taking participation for both training and also for both testing purposes so what is a bootstrap so bootstrap aggregating also called bagging is nothing but a machine learning ensemble meta algorithm designed to improve the stability and accuracy of machine learning algorithms using statistical classification and regression this classification and regression we have given you a little bit conception on this classification and regression and this bootstrapping aggregating is actually will improve the stability and accuracy of machine learning algorithms so from the real world going through the five different phases then we're having the analysis results machine learning steps we're having the training data 
there is the past data whatever we are having with the say we are having the respective classes and then it will be it will learn and the model will take that training data that is the past data to learn itself and then this very model will be given the testing data that is the future data the model will take and the model will predict so training data that is the past pre-existing data will be given to the model to make the model learned and then this model will take some testing data that is our future data and the model is supposed to predict the correct outcome so what are the steps we are having gather data from the various sources as we discussed the camera the sensors the databases the data sets might be the various sources here clean data to have the homogeneity so that is a pre-processing of data eliminating or filtering out the out layers dealing with the null values spike values and so on and build models select the right machine learning algorithm model we're having multiple different types of algorithm models are there depending upon the nature of the data set or the database on which you'll be working depending upon the purpose the right model has to be selected gather insights from the models results and then visualize transform results into some visual graphs and charts for the better understanding randomly split examples into training set u and also the test set v use training set to learn a hypothesis h measure percentage of v correctly classified by h and repeat for different random splits and average the results as i told you this one earlier also in case of cross validation cv is equal to 5 we are dividing our full data set into five different segments containing 20 percent of the records and records or say rows and what will happen the each and every time one segment will be treated for test and other four segments will be treated for the training set and in this way the process will be continued for all five segments and in this way we can go for the randomly split examples into training set and also the test set and training set will be denoted by u the test set will be denoted by v and use training set to learn a hypothesis that means the learn the pattern in our existing data and measure the percentage of v correctly classified by h so that will give us the measure of the efficiency of our model and repeat for different random splits and we, we shall go for average of the results we are going to discuss the topic that is overfitting what is the overfitting the model learns the training set too well it overfits to the training set and performs poorly on the test set so now what will happen on the training set it is performing good but whenever the unseen test set will be given to that the model will be performing very poorly and that is known as overfitting the main reason of overfitting is acceptance or taking into consideration of multiple number of feature attributes so that is the main cause of overfitting so whenever we are having say limited number of feature attributes which are having the statistical score highest or higher so that we can deal only those feature attributes which are the decisive for the outcome then obviously this overfitting model can be solved and in some books it is written and also in our in our practice in our project work we have seen that sometimes more than four to five feature attributes can make a model overfitted now what is the underfitting when the model is too simple and both the training and test errors are large here so model is not have been trained properly so in the training set in the test set the errors are large and that is known as the underfitting so underfitting of our model so in this way we have completed this particular topic and now we shall go for the next video and where we are going to cover the categorizations of machine learning models